Be seated. Your next witness. We, we call Ron Schnell. Okay. Schnell. S-C-H-N-E-L-L. -L. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Uh, please introduce yourself to the jury. I'm Ron Schnell. And what is your current job title, Mr. Schnell? I'm a director at Berkeley Research Group. And could you briefly describe your educational background since high school? I have a master's degree in computer science. Do you have an undergraduate degree? I do not. And can you explain to the jury why not? Um, uh, when I was a kid, uh, there was a lot of publicity about me because uh, I was a professor at NYU when I was 14. Um, NYU actually offered me to go into their freshman class when I was 14, but I decided that I wanted to experience the social aspect of high school. So I turned them down, but by the time I got to college, uh, they skipped me from undergraduate to graduate. So when did you receive your master's degree from Syracuse University? It wasn't until 2008, actually. And, and why? Why wasn't it until 2008? So um, because of my previous background while I was at Syracuse, um, including I, I did work at MIT um, in the artificial intelligence lab for uh, the, the two founders of artificial intelligence, Patrick Winston and um, Marvin Minsky. Um, I was immediately lured to industry even while I was in graduate school. And eventually, they offer you enough money where you have to take them up on it. So what, so when you were lured away from Syracuse University, uh, what did you do? I worked at Bell Labs um, on something called the Unix operating system. Um, Unix is uh, an operating system, which is the core of the computer, what makes everything work. Um, Microsoft Windows is an operating system. Mac OS is an operating system. You may have heard of Linux which is, um, you know, Unix was the predecessor to Linux. So I worked on the kernel of the Unix operating system at Bell Labs. And, and when was that approximately? What year? Uh, 1986. Okay. And, and how long did you work at Bell Labs? Um, a couple of years. And what did you do after Bell Labs? After that, um, I was lured away to uh, IBM. So I worked at IBM on their version of the Unix operating system, which was called AIX, also working on the kernel and managing other programmers working on the kernel. And can you just briefly explain what the kernel is? Right, the kernel is the center of the operating system, so it actually controls the piece of software that controls the whole computer. So it gets down to the bit level, where it's uh, actually really, everything that goes on in the computer has to go through the kernel. Okay. And what did you do after IBM? Um, after IBM, uh, I founded a startup company. What was the name of that startup company? It was called Secure Online Systems. And what did Secure Online Systems do? It was a company that uh, wrote software for mainframe computers running the various versions of the Unix operating system. And were there any other investors in Secure Online Systems, Inc.? Yeah. Um, my business partner in that was Sylvester Stallone. And what, what eventually happened to Secure Online Systems? Well, it was, um, it was as I said, a, a, a software product that ran on mainframe computers running Unix. Um, and we actually completed the product, and it ran very well. But mainframes running Unix kind of ceased to exist back then, so we had to shut it down. So what did you do after uh, the, the company shut down? Um, then I went to work at uh, Sun Microsystems, working on their version of Unix, which is called Solaris, uh, also working on the kernel. And approximately how long were you there at Sun? Approximately five years. And um, did you also work for Drivers Aces Inc.? Right. Coincident with that, I also uh, founded another startup called Driver Aces. Um, and we wrote what are called device drivers to run on the Unix operating systems. Um, a device driver actually teaches the computer how to talk to hardware devices. So it also runs within the kernel. Uh, have you founded any other startups? Yes. 
what, what was the other startup? What was at least one of the other startups? So um, the last startup I founded uh, was called MailCall.com, M-A-I-L. Um, and that was a, a startup that allowed you to uh, read and manage your email on your uh, cellular phone before there were smartphones. So a computerized voice would read you your email and you could speak a reply into the phone or send it to a fax machine, basically let you manage your email on the road. And what happened to mailcall.com? Um, I sold that to a public company in 2000. And what did, what did you do after that? Um, after that, I um, ended up working uh, at Equifax, one of the three credit bureaus in the United States, uh, running software development for their uh, internet marketing division. Um, and how long, did you, how long were you in that position? Until 2005. And what happened in 2005? In 2005, I was asked to run uh, what's called a monitorship uh, for the D.C. District Court um, in, for, for two cases, uh, U.S. versus Microsoft and New York et al. versus Microsoft, uh, the two largest antitrust cases in, in U.S. history. So I was uh, responsible for running that organization. Um, I hired 93 people over six and a half years to, to perform that monitorship. And what, what type of work were you doing in that monitorship? Um, highly technical work, looking at uh, all of Microsoft's uh, documents and source code and, and things like that. Um, I can't talk too much about it because of a protective order, um, but I had uh, special master powers in that, in that matter, in those matters. And you said you, you were in that position for six and a half years? Correct. So that takes us to about 2013, is that right? It was 11. 2011, okay. And um, what did you do, um, what did you do in 2011? Um, in 2011, I didn't do much until um, 2013 when I took the role as a director at Berkeley Research Group. Okay, and that's your current position, correct? Correct. And what are your responsibilities at Berkeley Research Group? So I do all sorts of things. I um, uh, generally, I consult, I do software projects and manage software projects and architect them. But I also do things like this where I'm um, consulting in litigation and sometimes testifying in litigation. Uh, have you taught any courses? Yes, I'm uh, an adjunct professor at Nova Southeastern University. And what classes do you teach there? I teach computer security and the Unix operating system environment. Although, since COVID, I haven't been doing that. And have you published any scholarly articles? Yes, I have two published articles, one related to um, computer security and another relating to um, antitrust enforcement using technology. And what experience do you have in statistical or forensic analysis of social media? Um, a bunch of the consulting work I've done uh, involves uh, analyzing data from social media. Um, most of them have been um, consulting for litigation. Some of them are consulting for non-litigation. Um, yeah. And is that work both in civil and criminal matters? Yes. And could you describe the work just a bit more in terms of what you've performed regarding statistical or forensic analysis of social media? I can't talk about the specific cases because I, I haven't testified on them, and some of them are awaiting indictment, most likely. Um, but in general, it's, sim it's really the same sort of stuff I've been doing here, analyzing data uh, from the, the social networks. And what social media platforms have you performed forensic analysis? All of the major ones. And what are, some of, what are the major ones? Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Reddit. How much of your expert work is for uh, plaintiffs versus work for defendants? Well, I don't consider myself working for either plaintiff or, de or defendant. I, I take my role as an independent expert extremely seriously. Um, but looking at who, whose counsel has hired me over the you know, nine or so years I've been doing this, it's, it's almost exactly equal. And how many times have you been a consulting expert? Uh, including litigation and non-litigation, hundreds. How many times have you been qualified in court arbitration or in sworn court testimony to provide expert testimony? Eight times. Have you ever been disqualified as an expert by a court? No. Uh, do you believe that your testimony will be helpful in assisting the jury understand the facts of this case? I do. Your Honor, at this time I tender Mr. Schnell as an expert in the fields of statistical and forensic analysis of social media. Any objection? Your Honor, can we be heard? Do you want to void here? 
Y yes, I do. Okay, you can go, dear. Thanks. Sir, my, my name's Wayne Dennison. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, you made here an analysis of certain tweets and hashtags, right? Right. And you made no effort to connect those tweets and hashtags to the statements being okay. made uh, by Adam Waldman. I'll sustain the objection. The void here is just to, for his qualifications as an expert. Can we be heard, Your Honor? If you want to come Thank forward, you. that's fine. All right, so Mr. Dennison, do you have any objection to him moving in as an expert? No. All right, then I'll move him in as an expert in statistical and forensic analysis of social media. Okay? Yes, sir, your question. Mr. Schnell, what were you asked to do in this, in this matter? So I was asked to do several things. Um, I um, used the official Twitter APIs to uh, bring in data over certain uh, several different time spans. Um, initially, it was uh, April of 2020 to January of 2021, um, and uh, analyzed various hashtags and things like that. And what is significant about April 2020? I understand that uh, April 2020 is related to um, the alleged defamatory statements by Mr. Waldman. And you, what search, you talked about APIs, what, what, is it, what does that mean? So API stands for Application Programming Interface. Um, that is a service that's provided by companies like Twitter so that um, professionals can write programs to uh, query Twitter to ask for various things. In this case, I use two of their APIs. One of them is called the Search API, and that allows you to give search terms and it will return all the tweets containing those search terms through a certain date range. The other one is called Accounts API, and I use that, um, again, through a certain date range to return any tweet that contained that hashtag. And you just... And I should add that it, it may not be obvious why you need to do this, but if you just do a search on Twitter itself, it's not going to return everything. It's going to return a subset of what is out there. Um, but using these APIs, which you pay a lot of money for, uh, they sort of guarantee that you'll, you'll almost guarantee that you'll get everything. And you mentioned hashtags. I know a lot of people know what those are, but for those who don't, what's a hashtag? Well, hashtags are um, a function of Twitter. They're really just part of the text of a tweet um, or, or a profile, and it, it's convenient to put things in hashtags so that when somebody searches, um, they can search for a particular hashtag and it'll, it'll come up. <coughs> and um, did you uh, choose particular ha hashtags to search for? I did. And how did you choose which hashtags to use? Well, initially I was looking at uh, tweets that would be negative towards Ms. Heard. So um, I looked through uh, tweets that were negative towards Ms. Heard and I found that uh, a, a super majority of them were using one of four different hashtags. And so overall, what did your analysis find regarding negative hashtags about Ms. Heard from April 2020 until the end of January 2021? Well, there were 
over 1,243,000 and change um, uses of those hashtags during that time frame you just mentioned. And did you perform an analysis of the negative hashtags from April 2020 until January 2022? Yes, I did. And what was the result of that? There were over another million, so you know, 2.38 million, I think. And how did you determine that the tweets were negative about Ms. Heard? Well, you know, I hadn't been asked that until later on in this, but I, I didn't think that that would be in controversy. I mean, some of these hashtags are are, are pretty rude, and uh, it, it, it would really surprise me that anyone would think that they wouldn't be negative towards Ms. Heard. But when um, when I was asked about it later, I um, actually took a random sampling and, and looked at them and, and could not find any that were not negative towards Ms. Heard. And what was the random sampling that you used? I did two of them. They were a thousand each. And how did you determine which thousand uh, tweets to use in, to review in each search? I wrote a program that truly selected them at random. And in, in your experience, uh, is 2,000 tweets a meaningful sample? If they're chosen at random in this in this universe, yes. Okay. In addition to the four hashtags for Ms. Heard, did you um, review any other? Did you look at any other hashtags? I did. And what hashtags? Did, what type of hashtags did you look for? I looked at what I found to be six hashtags that would be negative towards Mr. Depp. Okay, but Michelle, could you put up um, demonstrative one, which is on the fifth page of Mr. of attachment four of Mr. Schnell's uh, expert designation? Um, Mr. Mr. Schnell, did you create this chart? I did. And what data is this chart based on? This is based on the, um, the search API from Twitter, and it rolls up um, the number of tweets with the various hashtags by month of, e of the, these two years, Th yeah, three years. Your Honor, I'd like to uh, I'd make this a demonstrative, sh Schnell, uh, Schnell demonstrative one. Or do you want it to be a? If I could get it one of the numbers, since it's going to be part of the record, just. OK. Um, can, can we call it Chanel demonstrative one, and then I will give you a number? I, well, the, the last number I have is 1837. I don't know. If, do we know if that's the last? Uh, can we make it? Can we? How about we make it 1900? That way it's not. How, can we just make it 1900? That's perfect. OK. All right, 1900 it is. Any objections to demonstrative? No, Your Honor. All right, you can publish that. And is this the is this the chart you made, uh, Mr. Schnell? It is. Okay. And the at the top here there are hashtags that are in yellow. You see that? I do. Okay. And if we go all the way to the to the right, um, well, first let's let's scroll over to the left here. I, I apologize. You see, in 2020, there's the months of June and July. I do. Okay. And what are, what are these columns first tell the jury what they represent? So each of these is the number of tweets with the hashtags, um, with the corresponding hashtag during that month. Okay. And if we look at the first one in yellow, uh, you see that first hashtag, the fourth one over? I do. And are, are there any, what does it show from 2018, Frank, to July of 2020? There were there were none, and then what happens in August of 2020? Um, well, there's a remarkable jump from July to August of 2020. It goes from zero to 13,878. And if we scroll to the right, the last three hashtags, uh, in which are highlighted, or shows the difference between June and July. What what did your analysis show? Well, you can see that June is is about. At its steady state um, in July, there's also a remarkable jump. And that's for all three of those hashtags? That's correct. Okay. And the, and the hashtags, if we, if the hashtags that are in blue are the ones related to, to Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. Okay. Oh, by the way, what is your understanding of when the last alleged defamatory statement was made by Mr. Depp through Mr. Waldman? My understanding is that it was the end of June of okay. that year. Of 2020? Yes. Now, looking at the hashtags that are highlighted in blue for Mr. Depp, 
for the months of November, December, November and December of 2018 and January of 2019, what did your analysis, what does your analysis show? Well, I see a, a, a remarkable jump in November of 2018. Um, and, and, and then it starts to, well, it goes way down in December of, nine, of 18 and January of 19. Okay. And do you know when Ms. Heard wrote the op-ed in this matter? My understanding it was, is that it was December of 2018. Okay. And if we go to November of 2020 for the hashtags related to Mr. Depp, um, if you see the difference between October of 2020 and November of 2020, what do you see there? I also see a large jump from October to November of 2020. Okay. And if we look at the um, last hashtag in blue that says Johnny Depp is a wife beater, what does that show in terms, what did your analysis find in terms of tweets with that, those hashtags? It looks to me that also, I mean, there are none uh, prior to, well, a little here and there, there, there are single digit ones, but prior to November of 2020, there are basically none, and then it jumps up to over 2,000. And do you know what happened in November of 2020? My understanding is that's when the UK trial ended. Okay, we can take this down. And can you put up um, demonstrative two, which will make 1901, if it, which will identify as 1901? That's fine, 1901. Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, 1901 can be published. And Mr. Mr. Banya, um, what is what data is this chart based on? Oh, <laughs> I did the same thing, Mr. Schnell. What data is this chart based on? Uh, this chart is actually based on the data we um, just looked at, uh, but out until. Um, January of 2022, um, and it's it's just another way of displaying the numbers in graphical form so that we can see peaks and valleys. And what are the what are the dotted what are the dotted lines? So if you look at the top, you can you can see um, that the dashed lines are uh, the negative uh, hashtags towards Ms. Heard, and the solid ones are the negative hashtags towards Mr. Depp. And, and what, do you, what is being shown here, what do you, in your analysis, what is shown with the uh, tweets related to Ms. Heard? Um, well, you can see that there's a huge uh, spike in February of 2020, which I believe uh, Mr. Waldman just testified that that's when he leaked an audio tape of some kind. There's also um, a notable, remarkable spike in July of 2020 in November of 2020 and then in March of 2021. And the spike in February 2020, um, that that came before the alleged defamatory statements, correct? Which one? The, sorry, the spike in, in, yeah, February 2020. That is correct. And even though that spike came in before the uh, alleged defamatory statements, um, even taking account for that spike, what time period has more negative tweets about Ms. Heard before or after April 2020? Right, so e even taking into account this, this really large spike in February of 2020, and, and you look at from the beginning of 2018 until the beginning of 2022, there are uh, a majority of the negative tweets are between April of 2020 through the uh, beginning of 2022. And do you recall um, at your deposition being asked that a, spike in, that a spike in negative hashtags occurring before April 8th, right before April 8th, 2020? Objection hearsay. I would oh. ask about his attorney. At, oh, oh, his, world. Good. I, I remember questions regarding particular dates, yes. And what's your understanding as to why there was um, more uh, negative tweets in April 6th and April 7th and April 8th, 2020. Objection, no foundation. Was there more negative tweets in April 6th, on April 6th and April 7th and in April 8th, 2020, as it relates to Ms. Heard? 
Right. If you if you look at the day by day um, um, counts, which I supplied to Mr. Depp, and um, you can see that this there's a, a spike that begins on April sixth uh, and goes for a few days. So on April sixth is, to my understanding, before um, what people are calling the alleged defamatory statement. And did you look at the tweets for April sixth and April seventh? I did. And what did you find? I found uh, that. There are uh, Waldman statements that are the same as on the 8th, on the 6th, and the 7th. Um, the the uh, Daily Mail on the 6th and um, Vanity Fair on the 7th. And what, term, what terms were being used? Um, a, well, hoax is certainly used in, in each of them. Um, I think abuse hoax is used in one of them. I, I don't have it in front of me, but... Generally speaking, the same. in the seventh, I think it's the same exact terms that are used in the one on the eighth, but the sixth may be slightly different, but it has the word hoax. Okay. If we can go to the second page of this uh, demonstrative. What's being shown in the second page of this demonstrative? So this is generally, it's the same data as the first one, but I've removed uh, one hashtag, the Justice for Johnny Depp hashtag, because it kind of overwhelms all the others because there are so many of them. And by removing it, it sort of rescales the graph, and you can see the others much better. And even though they looked really tiny in the in the previous page, you can see that they're big numbers, you know, over a hundred thousand and stuff. So um, this really this shows. And, and if you look between the two, you can see that the the curves are the same. So it shows like a a mathematical correlation uh, between all the hashtags. So what do you mean by mathematical correlation? Well, they're correlated. You can see the the numbers go up and down at the same place. So, so I'm understanding the hashtags are essentially all going up and down at the same times? Correct. Okay. Thank you. And, and can we put up uh, demonstrative exhibit three? Which would make 1902? 1902, That's yes. Fine. Thank you. All right, any objection to 1902? None, this is demonstrative. Yes, okay. You can publish that. Mr. Sh Mr. Chanel, did you create this chart? I did. And and what, what does this chart show? So what I did was I, I took the data that I supplied uh, to Mr. Depp, uh, which was the original data from April of 2020 through January of 2021, and I searched it uh, for certain key terms, um, specifically hoax, fake, and fraud. And that's, that's what it's representing. The top part, anyway. And the top part, if you look at the, for hoax, fake, and fraud within the, and this is within the negative hashtags or it's misheard? Right. This is only searching through the ones that have one of these four hashtags in them. Okay. And, and if you look at the total, oops, I'm putting that in black. Let's clear that. Oh, you saw the line, line there. What's the total number of um, times it was used in the, in the negative tweets, either hoax, fake, or fraud? 81,121. And did you perform any other searches on the data? Yes. And what, what searches did you perform? So I also looked in that same data um, for references to Waldman by itself, or Wald, and then followed by anything, followed by Mignon or Minions, Minion, depending how you want to pronounce it, sort of a portmanteau of Waldman and Filet Mignon, I guess, or Minions. Um, and looked for those in, in the same data. And in terms of the percentage of the amount of times Waldman or Waldman Yon was used in the negative hashtags from April 2020 through, is it January 2021? The percent? Uh, yeah, what's the percentage? Yeah, so I found over 25% of the ne negative hashtag tweets, or one out of every four on average, had either uh, Waldman or Waldman Yon. And I see you ran searches for hoax, fake, fraud, rather than abuse hoax in quotes or sexual violence hoax in quotes. Why, why didn't you run those searches? Objection compound. Overruled. So, I, um, so if, I, if I had put them in quotes like that, say, say abuse hoax in quotes, that would require that it show up in exactly that way, with the same spacing and the same order. So if it said something like, there was abuse and there was a hoax, it wouldn't get caught. 
Um, so if I take the quotes out and search for them separately, search for things separately, I'll, that'll cover it and make sure that I catch everything. And based on your analysis of, of these searches within the ha negative hashtags, um, what, are the, what are the results of these searches mean? Well, um, obviously I can't read what's in people's minds, but um, you know, when, when I read the, um, the disclosure of Mr. Depp's expert, Mr. Banya, he stated that if these terms, uh, in particular the Waldman, Wald, uh, Waldman term. Um, Objection, were, hearsay. He's an expert. No, overrule. If, if these terms had shown up um, a lot of times in the negative hashtag tweets, then that could show that um, they were, you know, paraphrasing the impetus of um, why people tweeted these. So I sort of adopted uh, Mr. Banya's opinion on that and um, found this large number. So I, I agree with, with Mr. Depp's expert that this could show um, a substantial correlation. And to what level of confidence do you hold the opinions you just provided to the jury? To a reasonable degree of scientific certainty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Schnell. I have no further questions. All right, cross-examination. Uh, sir, this is the first time that you've testified as an expert as in the field of statistical and forensic analysis of social media, isn't it? I've, I've consulted on litigation for it, but it never got to testimony. That's correct. This is your first testimony. Testimony, yes. Right. And this is, and you've never been involved in a defamation case before. That's correct. Okay. And you're being compensated for your time here today and the work you did, correct? Berkeley Research Group is being compensated, right. yes. At six hundred dollars an hour. That's what they're getting paid. Right. Um, and you're aware that Mr. Depp is being sued based on allegedly defamatory statements. What are the dates of those statements? I, um, my understanding is it's, um, there was something around April 8th, I believe April 27th and June 24th, somewhere in the end of June. Okay. Um, so, and where do you understand those statements to have resided? In the public media. In any particular uh, article or? I, I didn't consider that. All right. So you're not offering an opinion on how widely the articles that contain those statements were read? That's correct. And you're not offering an opinion as to how many people actually saw the language that's been attributed to Mr. Walden? Only a, a minimum number of people who could have seen it based on the tweets that referenced him. Okay. Um, and you don't know even where those references appear in the articles? I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, the, there are statements by Mr. Waldman that appear in articles. Do you understand that? I do. Do you know in what portion of the articles the statements appear? I've looked at the articles, and um, from that, I, I've seen where they appear. And, that, and where, in general, do they appear? In, in the middle, the end, what's your sense? That I'm not sure of. I mean, the, the ones I looked at on the 6th and 7th, I think they were towards the top. All right. So you testified that you reviewed a, a number of hashtags that you deemed were negative towards misheard. That's right? Yes. Yeah. And the, the four you picked, at least the negative ones, uh, justice for Johnny Depp, that's from one of them, right? That's right. Amber Heard is an abuser, that's one of them? That is one of them. We just don't like you, Amber, that's one of them? That is one of them. And the last one was Amber Turd, right? That is, an, that is another one. Okay. Um, and these four hashtags you identified and searched for, you have no, you don't believe they have any connection, or you testify that the, you have no connection to these three Waldman statements. The hashtags aren't, aren't connected to Waldman, right? Well, I did an additional analysis that did show how many of those had Waldman 
connected to them, and I found that one out of four of them did. Right. But when you were deposed, you were asked whether, whether these were related, these particular hashtags were related to any of the Waldman statements, and, and you said no at that time. I said more than that. I, I did. I said I, I said I didn't know, and then and then I said um, I'm basing my. Uh, I, I'm looking at Mr. Banya's opinion, where he says they would be if they were in large number, and I'm, I'm adopting his opinion and agreeing with him that they must be connected. So, so with, you're adopting an opinion that hasn't been rendered in this case yet by anybody but you. Well, I know that Mr. Banya. Has testified. Okay. Uh, what I'm saying is, I know that Mr. Banya, Mr. Banya's disclosure says that he is expected to come to that opinion. All right. But the only person who's ever expressed this opinion to date in this courtroom is you, correct? I, w I would know. I haven't watched everything. I've watched a bit. So but you're, you're adopting your own opinion. Um, no, I'm adopting the opinion that I read in Mr. Banya's disclosure. Right. And that's not the opinion you had during your deposition. I think I did make reference in my deposition to uh, what Mr. Banya said and, and that I agreed with it. All right. And you indicated in deposition you didn't take into account statements made in the media, correct? Made in what? I couldn't use. You, you said you did, you did not take into account in your analysis statements made in the media. Media. Um, yes, in the analysis where I gathered data and decided which data to gather, I did not take into account statements in the media. All right. You, so you looked at data, you produced charts, you did analysis relating to the data, but you had no reason at the time you did this to consider any particular statements. Isn't that true? That's true. I think that's a, a, an appropriate scientific methodology to not, uh, to first get, gather as much data as possible and then drill down on the data. And the Twitter data you collected shows that the four hashtags you, had, you identified were in existence before Mr. Waldman made the first statement in April 2020, right? That's correct. Right. In very small number. But, but justice for Johnny Depp has been around since 2013, correct? Um, that sounds correct. Yeah. Amber Heard is an abuser, and Amber Turd first appeared in 2016, correct? I don't recall, actually. Right. Do you recall if there was any portion of Mr. Waldman's statement that made it any reference to Amber Turd? Not that I've seen. Right. Uh, people can form a negative view of Ms. Heard without reading Mr. Waldman's statements, correct? People can form a negative opinion of anyone without reading anything. That's correct. And you didn't consider whether there was negative publicity around Ms. Heard other than the Waldman statements? Well, my, what I did was to report on uh, correlation uh, with, with these hashtags and certain search terms in particular. I wasn't trying to read anyone's mind as to why they used them. Right. You didn't form any opinion that of, of the million tweets, million plus tweets that you looked at, um, were connected in some way to Mr. Waldman's statements? I did eventually, yes. You, you, didn't, you did eventually after you read somebody else's report relative to testimony that hasn't been given here? Well, I did it before my deposition. All right. You uh, have a demonstrative that uh, counsel played for you. Can we put up uh, plaintiff's uh, 1901 again? This is yours, right? Correct. Um, the biggest spikes, by far the biggest spikes here, are attributable to what hashtag? Justice for Johnny Jap hashtag. Yeah. And there are spikes that existed uh, considerably in, before Mr. Waldman's statement. You were asked about that by counsel? One of them did. That was the date that Mr. Waldman leaked uh, the audio tape. It, it, the biggest spike was before the statements. Right, the date he leaked the audio. And then there were many statements that, um, or, or there are many hashtags, or uses of the hashtag, that follow the statements. 
You'll have to be more specific. Well, so you, you looked at a million two of these hashtags, right? Right. In your chart, didn't 980,000 of these plus belong to justice for Johnny Depp? That sounds about right. You'd have to show me, but I, I, I'll take your word for you. All right. But the vast majority of them were justice for Johnny Depp. A majority of them were. Well, it, it wasn't the majority so large that you had to draw another chart. The reason for drawing another chart is, is because the numbers were high at particular points, so you wouldn't be able to see the other hashtags. Right. Literally, this is your chart, and, and all of the other activity at the bottom you can barely see in comparison to the hashtag justice for Johnny Depp. Right. As I testified, you can barely see them because of the spikes in the justice for Johnny Depp hashtag, but the but when you look at the other chart, you can see that those others are still very large numbers. So you're not offering any opinion as to what caused these spikes? That's correct. Right. So you're, you're not opining as to why these spikes are there? I'm only talking about correlation. Right. You're talking about a mathematical connection. That's right. Right. Um, and, you're, and you don't purport to be in anybody's head such that you know why they did uh, a particular post with a particular hashtag. That's correct. All right. uh, there's a second spike that appears to be in July of 2020. Um, yes, the, the pointer was pointing to a different one, but yes. Yeah. Um, were you aware there was a trial in the, in the UK in 2020? I'm aware. And in July. Um, you're saying it was in July? No, but we, as of that, the time of that spike, there was ev there was uh, publicity around a trial, correct? I don't know how much publicity there was. I, I know the trial was going on then. All right. There are a number of things called out in your chart. Um, relative to particular dates, December 17th, February 11th, February 14th. You, you see all those? I do. And there, you, your chart makes absolutely no reference to and does not identify the dates of any of the Waldman statements, does it, sir? Not, no, it doesn't call those out, if that's no. what you're asking. It, it calls out a whole bunch of other dates, but nothing relative to the Waldman statements. Correct. All right. All right. At some time, at some point, uh, you ran searches for additional search terms, uh, hoax, fraud. I, I think you said fake. Um, and then you don't know why those terms appear. Do you? I'm not sure what you mean by that question. Are you asking you me? Don't, you could not perform a scientific analysis of the reason why these th those terms appeared in the in the tweets you were looking at. Right. I could only show mathematical correlation. Right. You could show a correlation, but but you don't have any idea why they're there. I I can't get into people's heads. Right. And just because the tweet contains one of the terms does not mean the tweet was in some way prompted by Mr. Waldman, right? Well, there, there are a few things I searched for, the ones you just mentioned and then the, the Waldman and waldman uh terms. So, you know, it's not that big a stretch to say that it's related to, to Mr. Waldman if it's his name and waldman or Minion. Wait a minute. It's, it's is the new standard it's not that big a stretch? No. Right, I'm trying to speak. I'm trying to speak. Right? Yes. All right. So you're not suggesting that you know why Mr. Waldman's name appeared in, in any of these tweets? Well, if you look at, if you look at the tweets that have Waldman Yon, you know, and I, and I looked at a, a large sample of them. Um, Wait, you, just a large sample was... Uh, 2,000 out of a million two. No, I looked at more than that of, okay. of these. But um, that's another thing that I wouldn't expect to be in controversy. 
um, you know, when people are saying that they're part of the wild minions or, th or things like that, um, I would expect everybody to agree without arguing that it has to do with Mr. Waldman. And nobody asked whether it had Mr. to do with Mr. Waldman. I, I'm wondering, how do you know that it had anything to do with Mr. Waldman's statements? But I was under the impression, I was informed that nobody really knew who Mr. Waldman was before all of this, so I wouldn't expect it to be anything else. I didn't think it was in controversy. It wasn't in controversy whether everyone knew who Mr. Waldman was, is that your testimony? No, I'm saying it wasn't in controversy that, um, that if somebody was suddenly talking about him that it had to do with this case. All right, but again, it's not did it have to do with these, this case. It's did it have to do with the allegedly defamatory statements. You have no idea, do you, sir? I can't get into anyone's mind. I can only talk about the science of it. Right. Um, and so you identify all of these uh, hashtags as, as, as negative towards Ms. Heard, right? Right. Justice for Johnny Depp is not negative towards Ms. Heard, is it? No, but the tweets that use that hashtag are. No, but the hashtag itself, the, the, the hashtag that predominates through your analysis is not, in fact, negative towards Ms. Heard. I'm not talking, I'm not opining on the hashtag itself. I'm talking about the tweets that contain that hashtag. But the hashtag itself is not negative. That's not part of my opinion, one way or the other. But do you have an opinion as to whether justice for Johnny Depp is a good thing? <laughs> That's not part of my assignment. Okay. But you'll agree with me justice in general is a good thing? Big fan of justice. All right. Me too. No further questions. All right. Redirect. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, you, Mr. Chanel, you reviewed um, a not a large sampling of tweets of justice for Johnny Depp, correct? I did. And the, tw and the tweets that had the hashtag justice for Johnny Depp, how many of them were negative toward Ms. Heard? All of them. Okay. Um, and what percentage of the tweets with negative hashtags between April 2020 and January 31st, 2021 contain the terms Waldman or Waldman Over. Yes, yes, correct. Overruled a lot. Over 25%. One out of four. And in your analysis, how far in time do the tweets containing the terms Waldman or Waldmanion go? Like how far to, to now? Well, Beyond the scope of cross. He was asking about. Overruled. Um, so I, I think I disclosed at my deposition that I, that I looked further into um, 2022 and um, found that it continued to go on. I don't, didn't see any end to it at all. And based on your analysis, again, what period of time had more negative tweets against Ms. Heard before or after April 2020? It was clearly um, double as many from April to 2021. And then, that's even including the February 2020 spike, correct? That's right. So that's which, and that happened before April, obviously. So even if you put that in there, it's still a lot more after April of, uh, of 2020. And there are fewer months in that time period. I think there are 20 or 15 months in that time period and 27 months in the, in the first part. And based on your analysis, what if any end do you see to the negative tweets toward Ms. Hurt? Objection, no foundation. Based on his analysis up until the time? I'll sustain the objections. Okay. Did you see any, based on your analysis, did you, at the end of the time of your, of your analysis, what was happening with the negative tweets toward Ms. Hurt? to continue to go on. Okay. Mr. Chanel, after your cross-examination, have any of your opinions in this matter changed? No, they've not. Thank you. No. All right. All right. So you can have a seat in the courtroom where you're free to go. Okay, sir. Thank you.